జై గుడ్ జై మెస్టర్స్ ఇట్ ఓస్ కమ్స్ డౌన్ టు వన్ బేసిక్ క్వశ్చన్ ఇఫ్ ఇట్స్ మోర్ దెన్ దాట్ యూ కాంప్లికేటింగ్ ద సబ్జెక్ట్ ఆర్ యూ లివింగ్ యువర్ లైఫ్ టు ట్రై టు గెట్ ద మూమెంట్స్ ఇన్ ఫ్రంట్ ఆఫ్ యూ టు బీ ద వే యూ నీడ్ దెమ్ టు బీ so that you feel love so you feel inspired so you feel passion so you feel good or are you using the moments that unfold in front of you to get rid of why you don't feel love why you don't feel passion and why you don't feel inspiration all the time those are two completely different lives you can live them in the same place you can go moment to moment with events unfolding but this is what the buddhists mean by intent it is the essence the core of what you are doing with your life if you sit there and say i'm trying to get situations in a way that make me happy and the converse of that of course is i'm trying to avoid situations that make me sad that's a way of life it really doesn't matter how you're going about doing that if you decide i think getting married will do that for me if you decide i think having children will do that for me if you think being rich will do that for me or if you think not getting married will give me the freedom and do that for me not having children will do that for me and renouncing money because it's dirty and people mess everything up and i don't want to be involved in that they are the same thing from the point of view of this basic root of how are you living your life that's way deep but if unless you get that deep you're going to get lost and you're going to stay lost your whole life the question is not how you are going about doing it like i said if you want someone to stay with you you can use roses and nice words you can use threats or you can hire them it's the same thing not really the same i mean of course there's a social difference and a moral difference and but that's not what we're talking about they are the same thing you're basically saying i am not okay and i have decided for this person or some person to stay with me to be with me will make me okay okay that's what you decided how you go about doing that there's just the details you're doing the same thing you followed the part of your being that said i'm not okay and i need this person to be with me to be okay or the inverse you sit there and say i'm scared i'm scared that something might happen so i'm going to pay to not have it happen i'm going to use a gun to not have it happen i hire some really really good lawyers to not have it happen it's the same sociologically it's not the same one is more friendly to live around somebody who does it one way versus the other but the net result i'm telling you until you get to the point you understand it's the same i'm living the same life which is i've said it to you a million times i'm not okay check here's what i decide will make me be okay either getting or avoiding here's how i go about doing it it doesn't matter how you go about doing it but when it's all said and done you're doing the same thing you are following the part of your being that is not okay and letting it run your life there is a part of your being that's not okay did you know that maybe you got to meet it hello how are you i'm sam how are you doing not so well <laughs> cuz it's not okay it complains a lot it's got a lot of concepts and views and opinions and preferences and hopes and dreams see you're taught that hopes and dreams are spiritual things hopes and dreams are not spiritual things what a hope is i hope some day it'll be the way i want you don't hope some day it won't be the way you want you're already out there doing the same thing which is i'm not okay it needs to be a certain way for me to be okay and i hope it happens what are your dreams i dream that some day i'll get what i want i dream that some day i won't have to deal with all this garbage that's going on i dream that i'll get what i want there's nothing wrong with hopes and dreams and that's what's terrible about listening to me all right is if your choice is to be depressed because i'm not okay and i can't get what i want and i keep getting what i don't want and i've given up hope that's another way of looking at it i've given up hope that i'll ever be okay because i'm not okay and i'll give up hope that i'll ever be okay that's why they teach you that hope and dreams are spiritual things because they don't respect you 
It's like they think you can't do better than not being okay. So if you can't do better than not being okay, I want you to at least hope that someday it'll be okay. So you don't get all depressed on me and get weird. That's the best that society can do for you. Why? Because they don't understand the other way of life. Very few people have ever understood the other way of life. The starting position for almost every single person that ever walked the face of this earth for their entire life, from the time they cried the first time to the time they didn't want to die and they were crying when they left. I'm not okay. And things need to be a certain way for me to be okay. And I'm either trying to get them that way. I've given up hope that I can't ever get them that way. Or I'm an optimist. Someday I'll get them that way. You all look the same to me. You're people that have started as a position that I'm not okay. And then you decided, each of you differently, what it is that you think. Notice the key word is think, because you think a lot about it, don't you? You ever think about what will make you be okay? Ever think about what you want to happen? Ever think what you don't want to happen? You're living the life I'm talking to you about. The trouble is it's so pervasive that we don't see it as a way of life. It's like the fish doesn't know they're in water. I use that example all the time. Why? It's real. Unless they're a flying fish who jumped once, yeah, and they go back, ooh, you never saw anything different. Therefore, it is your norm. You don't know you're in water. It is the environment you're in. So we are in the environment as human beings. I'm not okay. How do you know you're not okay? I live in here. How about you? I live in here. There's loneliness. There's fear. There's insecurity. There's self-consciousness. There's embarrassment. There's, woo. there's a lot of things. And there's joy and there's love and there's special relationships and there's things. So there are things that make me feel better. Well, if there are things that make you feel better, you must not have felt so good. So you start with a situation that I'm not okay. And if you're not okay, you're going to spend the rest of your life trying to be okay. Fair enough. Have you done that? Have you spent every moment of your life trying to be okay and trying to avoid not being okay? That is a way of life. There are other ways of life, or at least another way of life. So let's put that aside. Spirituality, real spirituality, is the adverse of that. It says, if I find that there's something inside of me that's not okay, there's a reason for that. Why am I not okay? And you be careful, it's tricky, because the mind is so tricky. It says, I'm lonely. I need somebody special. And if I ask you, instead of asking you, who do you want? Or what does she look like? Or was it, you know, this whole game you play. If I went, tried to go deeper with you and said, well, why are you lonely? And she's going to say to me, because I haven't found anybody special. You didn't even laugh because it sounded so rational to you, right? <laughs> That's like sitting there saying, I have a stomach ache. Why? Because I can't find the Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> That's not why you have a stomach ache. You have a stomach ache. There was a primal reason that gave you a stomach ache. You're trying to placate and compensate for the stomach ache with Pepto-Bismol or Alka-Seltzer. So you don't get to tell me that the reason you have a stomach ache is because you can't find the Pepto-Bismol. Likewise, if you say, I'm lonely, that's like a stomach ache. It's a heartache. I'm lonely. Why are you lonely? Because I can't find somebody. It's exactly the same as saying, I can't find the Pepto-Bismol. That is not why you're lonely. There's a whole different reason why your stomach hurts. And there's a whole different reason why you're lonely. And you're trying to compensate and make up for it and make it feel better by finding somebody. I'm not passionate about my job. I don't like going to work. Why? I, I just been there too long. I need to find something that interests me. That's like looking for the pepto -Bismol. It's the same. That's the breakthrough that you have to have if you want to change your life is to understand that the entire methodology of saying, I'm not okay, and I'm going to try and figure out what will make me be okay, then I'm going to try to make it happen. Oh, you're going to be really busy and really tired. And there's proof that it doesn't work. Everybody has always done that their whole life. And guess what? They're still doing it. Hey, guys, if you're still doing it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work to not be okay, make up what you think will make you be okay, then kill yourself to try and get it, and then kill yourself to try to keep it or get rid of it once you decide it wasn't the right thing. And you're just very busy, very busy, going nowhere. It's like the hamster running on the wheel. Just keep going, run, 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 run. So the alternative is very deep. And now we're going to talk about that. I hope I have your attention. The alternative is there's a reason you're not okay. There's a reason you're lonely. There's a reason you feel insecure. There's a reason you feel embarrassed. There's a reason that underlies all of this. And if you deal with that, you can be free to enjoy your life. Doesn't mean you don't go to work. Doesn't mean you don't have children. Doesn't mean you don't get married. But you don't get married because you're not okay. 
You get married because you are okay, married or not, and you'd like to share the beauty and love that you found inside yourself. That's a perfect relationship. If the other person wants to stand in that light and receive all that love, wonderful. If they don't, fine. Wouldn't that be nice? If you go to your job and you're all passionate about it, and then somebody new comes in and gives you a different job, you get passionate about that. What do you care what you're doing? You're sitting on a planet spinning in the middle of absolutely nowheres. There's this tiny little ball spinning in the middle of dark, empty space, and you care what you're doing? I always play that truth with you. It's very important. You're sitting on a planet spinning around the middle of nowheres. You're only here for a few years. That's not something to be scared of. That's exciting. Don't worry. You don't have to stay. You drop down. You spend 50, 60, 70, 80, all right? And then you leave. You don't know where you came from, and you don't know what's going to happen after you die. But basically, you have this little bit of time sitting on the planet. There's not a single thing you're going to do that's going to make any difference to Mars or Jupiter, not to mention the sun, which is 93 million miles away. 93 million. What's in between you and the 93 million mile away sun? Nothing. That's a lot of nothing. And your next star, I always do this with you because I want you to do it. Your next closest star is 4.5 light years away. What does that mean? It's just a number. It doesn't mean anything. Hold a beam of light above the planet Earth. Let it go for one second. It circumnavigated the globe seven and a half times. That's the speed of light. Go for 4.5 years at that speed to hit star number two. What's in between? They give it a fancy name, interstellar space. In other words, nothing. There are 300 billion stars in your galaxy, and there's 2 trillion galaxies. And you're worried about what happened today. It is the most irrelevant thing in the course of truth that could ever exist. Use your mind to come in harmony with truth. Otherwise, your mind gets caught in this game. What is the game? I'll repeat it one last time. I'm not okay. What needs to happen for me to be okay? And how do I make it happen? That's how almost every single human being lives their lives, except for somebody who woke up, who woke up and realized, I don't live my life like that. <laughs> it's like devoting your life to the lowest part of your being. What part? The part that's not okay. All right. Is there another part? Yeah, there's another part. Wow, isn't that nice? But you'll never find the other part if you're completely hooked up with the part that's not okay. So what does it mean? It means coming in here and saying, I feel lonely. Not what do I do about it. Not I need to go to a bar and meet somebody. Why is there loneliness? Why do I feel lonely? So the first thing, if you want to grow, is you have to realize you're not lonely. You are noticing that there is something within your heart that has this feeling of loneliness. Who are you that notices it? That's the essence of spirituality. You are in there. You're a conscious, sentient being. What are you conscious of? I am conscious of loneliness. I'm not loneliness. Why? Because I could be conscious of happiness. I could be conscious of hunger. I could be conscious of anything. I'm the same consciousness that feels the heart when it's effervescent and flowing because it fell in love as the consciousness that feels the heart when it's heavy and dark and closed and hurt. There's just one of you in there. That's the essence of spirituality. It's called witness consciousness, objective observation, Krishnamurti called it. So you are the consciousness and you are aware that the heart feels loneliness. Fine. That's a good starting point. So now that you know you are not the loneliness, but you are the experience of the loneliness, you have objective observation. You have the ability to look at it and say, why is it there? Two days ago, it wasn't there. Two days ago, there was joy and happiness coming from the heart. There was passion about the job. Now there's fear, or I don't like it. What change? You're a scientist. You're going to understand to say, when you meditate, you are entering the laboratory of soul research. You are studying why it is that way, not just saying it's that way and I can't handle it, so I need to go out and do something to make it feel better, because you'll never go anywhere. Does it not change all the time? The heart changes all the time. It goes from loving something to not liking it at all. It loves to loving somebody to not liking them at all. Even one day later, one hour later, five minutes later. That is a great teaching. When you do a scientific experiment, you have variables. You eliminate some variables and you watch what change took place. So you look inside yourself, and I beg you to do this, and instead of if you feel lonely, running out to try to find something that makes you feel better about it, you ask, what is going on here? 
Why is this feeling now in my heart? It was not there two hours ago. And you will realize that somebody did something. Somebody said something to you that was not comfortable. You got a phone call. You got a letter. You had a thought. That's all it takes is a thought. Think that somebody might someday say something that's not comfortable and your heart will hurt. It doesn't take much, does it? So that's a clue. That's a clue as to why you're not okay. It's just like instead of saying I need Pepto-Bismol because my stomach hurts, you go there and you don't eat something that you were eating the day before. You notice it doesn't hurt. Then eat the thing back the next day and you notice your stomach hurts. You learn something. You learn that you don't need Pepto-Bismol. You have to stop eating three pounds of French fries for dinner. So it's the same thing with your emotions. It's the same thing with your heart. You notice that it didn't feel this way before George or Mary said something. And now all of a sudden, there's this heaviness within your heart. What is that telling you? That your heart is made of heaviness? No. It's telling you that somehow this event outside that took place, somebody saying something, has caused your inner heart to start feeling loneliness. Wonderful. That at least gives you the groundwork of working with it. Instead of saying, now that it's lonely, I need a drink. Now that it's lonely, I need to meet somebody new. You're reacting to the loneliness. You're buying into the loneliness as opposed to starting to understand what causes loneliness. And to make a very long story short, thank God, it's very simple. It's a very easy experiment. You're going to find out that it is always the same thing that causes everything to be the way it is inside of you. There are things that happen to you that when they come in, they feel good. When you feel good, your heart opens. Your mind gets positive. There are things that happen to you that when they come in, they feel bad. And when they come in, your heart closes and your mind starts to get negative. That's very good. You're a real scientist. You're starting to understand what's happening. So now you have a choice. This is the crux of your life. Either you go out and make sure that the bad things don't get said. Good luck. Or you go out and try to make the good things happen. Or you try to see why does something outside of me cause this change inside of me? I'm the one who lives in here. Nobody else is in here. It's my heart, my mind, my thoughts, my feelings. Why does something outside of me cause this change inside of me? And if you look at it, you're going to go very deep. You're going to see some very interesting things. One, you're going to see that the majority of time, I'm not going to say all, but the majority of time, When something happens outside, like you walk into a room, a kitchen, somebody's kitchen at a house you haven't been before, and they're cooking something and there's a smell. And you take the smell and all of a sudden without realizing you get in a mood. You were in a good mood when you walked in the house. You're in a fine mood for the kitchen. But now you walk in the kitchen, they're cooking, you smell a little bit and and now you're walking out and you're fighting with somebody. Why? How could a smell cause that? Because the smell smelled like the time your mother was cooking so-and-so when you were little and you asked to help and she pushed you away. Then all of a sudden, 40 years later, you walk into a house, the smell stimulates that to come back up and the negativity and the reaction that you stored from that previous experience causes your whole energy to change, causes your heart to change, causes your mind to change. Do I need to lecture on that or have you noticed? The one I really like is you were married and your ex was named Ben and he was not a very nice guy and it was not a good relationship by the end, an ugly divorce and so on. That divorce took place seven years ago in California. You now live in Florida and you're at a party and you're having a good old time and all of a sudden someone yells out, Ben, Ben, are you here? You watch your heart. It will skip a beat. You will start looking around. It bothered you to hear the name Ben. Have I exaggerated? Or have you noticed it's like that living in there? That is the reason that your heart hurts. Not because you had this trouble with Ben seven years ago, but because you stored the trouble inside of you. It makes me want to cry. That was an event that happened seven years ago. Obviously, you didn't like the event or you would not have gotten divorced. The trouble is you didn't get divorced. You left the human form, but inside the fights are still going on. Inside you go on a date and your mind says, no, Ben used to do that. I don't want nobody who slurps. I'm not going to anybody who slurps. You stored trouble inside of you. And sometimes people ask me, well, why do I have so much trouble inside? Because you store trouble inside. You stored every single bad experience that ever happened to you. You kept inside of you. And now you wonder why things remind you of it. You wonder why I have trouble with dreams. It's so funny. What we're talking about is is this, what's it called? Oh, yeah, psychology. 
There's a science that found the same thing. Freud was not the first one to notice that you hold that stuff in there. And then when you hold the stuff in there, it comes back up and it causes all kinds of weird behavior. The yogis wrote about it thousands and thousands of years ago. That thing that you stored inside, that energy pattern that you push down in there, they called us samskara. It's literally in the Upanishads, in the, in the Puranas. It's written. Why? Because yogis meditated. And when they meditated, they saw what was going on in there. That's what's going on in there. You have to understand that. If you are going to store everything that ever bothered you inside of you, you are going to be bothered. You're going to find that all kinds of situations trigger you, that you get uncomfortable, that you have nightmares, that things remind you of bad things. Of course they do. You stored them in there. The part that people don't understand, but is the essence of spiritual growth, which is you didn't have to do that. You are a very high being. You are capable of handling the fact that you got married to somebody who turned out to be a schnook, and so you got divorced. Fine. It's not a question of whether that should have happened. It's a question of why is it still bothering you 20 years later? Why is it still bothering you? They call about formative years. Psychologists figured out that there are formative years. I don't know what they are, two to five, seven, who knows what they say they are. I don't care. The net result, they're saying that's where your whole personality, your whole likes and dislikes, the way you are, your preferences, your beliefs, your hopes, your dreams, every single thing. The foundation of it is during the formative years. And you know what? They're right. Except for the fact that you're the one who's holding them in there. You don't need that in there. Why is that still in there? There's no fly paper in there. There's no super glue. There is nothing inside that keeps that inside of there except you, your will. So when it starts to come back up, you push it back down, don't you? Even as spiritual people, meditators, watch this. Somebody says something. Well, what do you want to do? I need, I need a moment. <sighs> okay, I'm okay now. No, you're not. <laughs> What was that all about? <laughs> that was about the fact that this stuff's coming up inside of me that was stored there from 20 years ago, and you're about to get yelled at, but I know I'm not supposed to do that, so I'm going to do something to push it back down. I hope you're not pushing it back down when you do that. There are ways to let it go. Do you understand that? And let's just skip right to the end. That's the key. Instead of living your life to have this garbage in there and collecting more every day, by the way, and then using your brilliant mind, your, your mind split the atom, your mind flew to the moon, your mind, the human mind. Don't sit there and say yours. It doesn't be exactly yours. You have a human mind, not an armadillo mind or a possum mind. They didn't do that. The human mind did that. And you have a human mind. You split the atom, you flew to the moon, you understand quarks, leptons, and bosons, subatomic particles. You, man, are you brilliant. What did you do with that brilliance? I tried to figure out how everybody needs to be for me to be okay. <laughs> That's what I did. You go, somebody else puts the atom, somebody else made air conditioning, somebody else made the darkness light. Me, I figured out how Sally better be. She believed George alone and they can only dance for two seconds. And I got it all figured out. So I used my brilliant mind to figure out how everything needs to be and not be for me to be okay. Then I used my brilliant mind to figure out how to make it happen. You are at war with life at all times go to West Point or some military school, they're going to teach you in order to engage in war, you need strategy and tactics. I'm sure you've heard those words before. If you don't know what you're doing, you can't win. If you have a strategy, but you don't know how to carry it out, that's your tactic. You're at war. Your strategy is how does everybody and everything need to be for me to be okay? That's your strategy. And then you come up with tactic, try and make it happen. And then you try to carry it out, All right? That's called being at war with life. The alternative is very deep, is to sit there and say, why do I need things to be a certain way to be okay? It's fine if it rains tomorrow. It's fine if it's sunny tomorrow. It's fine if it's cold. It's fine if it's hot. It's fun. It's just fun. It's just the earth is a fun place. There's all kinds of things going on. It's like I told you once, earth is God's idea of Disney World. There's computer camp, there's, there's relationships, there's, the, oh my God, there's so many different things going on on the planet Earth. How many moments in your life has there been nothing going on in front of you? How about none? But what I told you is you're sitting on a ball in the middle of nowhere, 99.9999999% of the universe, there's nothing going on. I mean, nothing, black, empty, void. And you're in a place where there's always something going on in front of you. Well, why are you not having fun? Why is that just not exciting? Why don't you wake up in the morning? I told you I was a spiritual being wakes up in the morning. I'm back. <laughs> I wonder what's going to happen today. It's going to be fun. 
and you just go about your business, having a good time, enjoying. Of course, if you go to work, you do your best. Why? It's fun. People understand that. Say, well, if I, if I didn't need anything, I wouldn't do my best. Ever hear of something called, what's it called? oh, yeah, sports. Draw a line on a field, get a ball, and make up some rules, and see how hard people try to do their best. <laughs> well, especially golf. I told you, you want to get the ball in, just pick it up and put it in a cup, right? <laughs> It's the easiest thing in the world, right? But it's no fun that way. Why? Because having these borders and boundaries and challenges brings out the best in you, and it's fun. Look how hard people try at sports. Why is that not what life is to you? It's a sport. In India, in the Eastern teachings, they say that life is God's leela. Leela means, it doesn't mean dance. It means sport. If I did Sanskrit, they told me that it translates the best thing you can get to it is it's God's sport. Why? Because of what I'm saying. You're playing. You're just here playing. You play for a little while. You get to do different things. You have fun with it. The only stupid thing to do is to not have fun. The weather is what it is. Then why not enjoy it? Why not enjoy the heat? I used to ask my students like this. If you like something, is it fun? If you don't like something, is it fun? Well, then like it. Well, you're going to tell it's not your choice? Ever try to decide whether you like it or not? I can't decide. I can't decide if I like them or not. I can't decide whether I like this or not. I can't decide. If well, decide that you like it because it's pretty stupid to decide that you don't like it. Not to mention things like the weather. I don't care what you choose. You ain't going to change the weather. The weather is what it is. So it's not logical. It doesn't make sense to do what we're doing inside, which is I'm not okay. Here's how the weather needs to be for me to be okay. Good luck. So now we're getting down to what you can do to change your life. Change how you deal with yourself. Be conscious. It's called mindfulness. Be a conscious being who looks at the weather and says, it's hot today. What I used to do with, with Mickey, I don't do it anymore because he likes it. I used to say, he'd go out there, it's hot. And I live in Florida, right? It's hot. And I'd say, what is he? He's a very intelligent man. I'd say, what do you mean hot? It's hot. How does it get hot? Uh, the sun. The sun's hot. The sun's 93 million miles away, Mick. Well, that must be something else to be 93 million miles away and you're complaining how hot it is. How big would a fire have to be in Miami for you to feel it here at all? The entire southern state could be on fire. You wouldn't feel it here. That's 360 miles away. That's 93 million miles away. There's this thing called a star. Everybody likes stars. They're romantic. You're circling around a star, and it's 93 million miles away, and you get to feel its heat. You can get star burn if you're not careful, right? <laughs> Tell me that's not fun. So you learn to work with yourself to change your attitude about things. It's your attitude. Every time I get hot now, it's exciting. It's a star. So you can have fun with your mind. I'm trying to teach you. Play with it. Don't complain about it. Don't mess up your life. Like I said, if you go in there and you see I'm not okay, now you know why you're not okay. I've given you two reasons. One is you stored everything that ever bothered you inside of you, and then you expect to be okay. Well, that's not going to work too good. And the second is you decided not to like things that are the way they are. I don't like I'm not tall enough. I don't like it. I'm not tall enough. Okay. Uh, I wonder why you're not okay. You decided by yourself. Nobody made you. You just decided by yourself to not like things. Well, you already told me when you don't like things, it doesn't feel good. If you store things that bothered you throughout your life inside of you, it's not going to feel good. So the answer to spirituality isn't mantras and meditation and this and that and the other thing. It's about wake up. You live in here. This is your house. If you left your house a mess and left all the pizza crust on the floor and the roaster all over, you wouldn't like coming home either. You did this. That's the beginning of understanding spirituality. You did that. That's not a mess in there. That's nice in there. You got a heart, beautiful heart. You got a brilliant mind. You got a body that's unbelievable, has a whole immune system. And I'm, okay, Come on, give me a break. They say there's 24 trillion living cells inside your body that every single minute of every single day work together to give you a body. When was the last time you said thank you? You just have all of this is given to you, and it's none of it's enough, is it? You just take it for granted and complain that you don't get nothing. You never get what I want. Well, you this pretty good body you got there. That mind's capable of thinking. The fact that it's thinking about what you don't like, that's your business. You did this. 
You have to own that. You made this a mess in there. I gave you some basic foundations. The main one is if you're going to store everything that ever bothered you inside of you, you are going to be bothered. I don't care if you learn anything else. Just learn that. And I'm not talking about big things, formative years, mommy, and this and that. Today, you called out to somebody. Hey, Sally, how are you doing? And she didn't say anything. How'd that do for you? She's your friend. No, that's not good, is it? It starts to say, why is he in there? What did I do? Oh, my God, I wonder if Sally George told her what I had said. Oh, no, no, he would never tell her. It goes on in there, doesn't it? Now I want to know, two days later, you see Sally again. Nothing? Nothing going on in there? You still have stuff in there about the simplest thing, saying, Sally, hi. You're sensitive. Why? Because you stored the feeling inside of you. You couldn't handle that somebody didn't say hello back. Turns out she had earbuds on, and so she didn't even hear you. But you made a thing out of it. You stored it inside of you. And now next time you see Sally, and who, who knows how bad it could get. You can start talking to people how bad Sally is. Actually, she's not even nice. I mean, she's a snob. And so you realize you're doing this constantly. What? Screwing yourself up because you can't handle reality. And then you're storing these bad feelings and stuff inside of you. And then you wonder why I started the talk by saying I'm not okay. Of course you're not okay. That is the foundation of not okayness. That's what I have found. The foundation of not okayness for everybody, for every single person, is they stored everything that ever bothered them inside of themselves. And they don't know how not to. And the essence of spiritual teachings is and should be learning how not to store that inside. So you realize it all comes back to where I started. Are you going to live a life? I haven't yet told you how to let go. But are you going to live a life that every moment of every second of my life is about figuring out what I think I need? Notice think. Think I need in order to be okay. And how do I go about making what I want to happen, avoiding what I don't want to happen, and just fight and fight and try, and then wonder why I have tension? <laughs> like, even there. I mean, I meditate, but I don't teach like that. Why? If you're sitting there creating tension and anxiety, and then someone says to you, the reason you have tension and anxiety, you're not meditating. That is not true. That's the same as saying the reason I have indigestion is because I, don't, I can't find Pepto-Bismol. Meditation is, should not be something you've already screwed yourself up, and now it'll make you feel a little bit better while you're sitting there. Now I can go back and do it again. It is about wondering, why am I so tense? Why am I so anxious? Why do I have all of these knots going on inside of me? Because you are at war with reality. You are not willing to look at life and say, you have 13.8 billion years of history behind you, and now you're unfolding in front of me. You are the result of everything that ever was. If your great-great-great-grandmother did not meet your great-great-great-grandfather, you ain't here. Everything is what it is because of all the forces and causes that cause it to be that way. Your starting position as a wise, intelligent, scientific person says, wow, hi, look what history brought me. Look what 13.8 billion years of creation and evolution, whatever you want to call it, ended up. 13.8 13.8 billion years ago, there was this big bang, and there was nothing but hydrogen gases. And then they all put themselves together, and all that happened, and now there's this person standing in front of me yelling at me. Wow! You get wise that your starting position has to be acceptance of reality. It is the result of everything that ever was causing what is fine. Doesn't mean you can't work with it. Doesn't mean you can't do things to raise it, to improve it, to work with it. It's passing by you. You'll get in. It's an interactive sport. But if you start by saying it shouldn't be the way it is and I hate it and I don't like it and it's making me sick and I have to, if you go to war with reality, you're not going to do anything. You're going to make yourself a mess. So the bottom line is as follows. If you are living your life by not being okay, making up what you think needs to happen for you to be okay and waiting for it to happen before you're okay, boy, I feel sorry for you. That's where the word compassion comes from because you're wasting your life. And if you're living your life not okay and afraid that something's going to happen to make it worse, and putting bars on your doors and protecting yourself, you're wasting your life. So what's the alternative? It's very, very straightforward. I have stored all this stuff inside of me. The reason I'm afraid of what I'm afraid of is not why you're afraid of what you're afraid of. You had different experiences. And because of that, you have different fears and different desires. They carved you. They molded you. Skinner, a social psychologist, said, man is the sum of his learned experiences. It's not true. You are the consciousness that notices that your mind and your heart are the sum of your learned experiences, that your psyche, what you're watching, what you are watching is the sum of your learned experiences. Go read a book. 
You'll be different about everything afterwards. <laughs> Go to a movie. You're going to have totally different feelings. This psyche is the sum of the learned experiences. You are the consciousness that is aware of that. Fine. What do you do about it? You don't store things inside of you. That doesn't mean you don't remember them. Memory is a normal thing. Something happens, your mind remembers it. It can bring it back. That's not the same as it happened. I didn't like it. I don't want to experience it, so I suppress it. Repression, suppression, call it whatever you want. I call it resistance. You just push it away inside. It's likewise not the same memory as saying I had this beautiful vacation in Hawaii. Oh, my God, it was so perfect. I went with my parents. Good. Very nice. You have a nice memory. That's not the same as saying, I want it to happen again. I want to marry someone that takes me to Hawaii. In fact, I want to marry someone who lives in Hawaii. I'm going to limit the only thing. You see what I'm saying? You let it screw your life up in both cases because you stored it inside of you instead of let it just be an experience you had. Good. I'm glad you had a nice experience. You had a bad experience. You know what's nice about a bad experience? It's over. Go to blogs and have them talk about their bad experience. When I was young, was is a past tense word. My mother did to me. That It's all past tense. Why is what's not happening bothering you? You have to challenge yourself. Why is what is not happening bothering you? I want you to say, if it's not happening, it can't be bothering me. It's not bothering me. I'm bothering myself about it. That ex-husband's not even here. Mommy's not even here. Sally's not there two days ago. She didn't say hello. They're not even happening. She doesn't I sit there and not say hello every minute for two days. If it's not happening outside, it should not be happening inside. Doesn't mean you don't have a memory. It means you, it's not a charged memory. You didn't store all these emotions and messes. Do you see the difference? That's what a subscar is. Subscar is not a memory. Subscar is something that you didn't let become a memory. It's over. You stored it in front of you and you held on to it with all the power of the negativity and the pain. It's crazy. So you learn to start working. It's called working with yourself. First, you become conscious. How? That's your business. Meditation, mantra, whatever you want to use. I don't care. I just want that you walk into the moment that's in front of you as an aware being. I am aware that this moment is unfolding in front of me. I wouldn't mind one iota. If you gave it the benefit of history by saying it took 13.8 billion years to get here, I think I should pay attention to it. By the way, I'm the only one experiencing this moment. Whoa, you want to be special? You are the only one experiencing the moment no one ever will and no one ever did. Wow, that moment took 13.8 billion years to get to you. <laughs> it's so kind of neat. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. Respect it. Worship it. That's your starting position, which is acceptance, honor, respect, appreciation, gratitude. For what? For being alive, for having the right to experience a moment that was given just to me. Wow. That's your starting place. That takes consciousness. So you're not reacting. Your reaction to your feelings about the moment are based on your past experiences. If you were clean, you would just experience the moment. Now, that's your starting place is acceptance. If you do that, it won't get stuck inside of you because you didn't judge it as good or bad or right or wrong or like or dislike. Really, you didn't judge it as this will be the way I want or this won't be the way I want. That's what you mean by good and bad and right and wrong because every one of you don't agree with what that is either in different cultures and different times. What you mean is I'm not okay. I made up a way it all needs to be for me to be okay. Now, is this matching or not? <laughs> if it's matching, I like it. If it's not matching, I don't like it. How about you? Is that personal? And then you go there and make a mess out of it because you decided you liked it or didn't like it. So instead, you work with yourself. You bring consciousness to bear. Imagine if you got to the point where every moment of every second of your life, that was your starting position. Wow, look what's happening now. Not your ending position. It's your starting position because you're going to interact with reality. So you first clean out and then what happens if I can't clean out that what's happening is so against what I want that it's bringing up all this garbage. It's reminding me of all these bad things. That's wonderful. It gives you an opportunity to let go. I started this talk by saying there's two ways you live your life. You walk into the moment and try to make it be the way you think it needs to be for you to feel better. Or you walk into the moment and say, hey, I got a bunch of junk inside of me. Come and get it. I don't want it inside of me. So if Sally doesn't say hello and he starts to get sensitive and weird. Good. Good, because it reminded him of high school or junior high or when his first girlfriend dumped him or whatever it is. And she was named Sally, too, by the way. You sit there and say, it hit my stuff. 
And now you have a choice. Do you want to keep your stuff or do you not want to keep your stuff? And you eventually get to the point where you decide, I don't want this stuff in here. If I have but one life to live, I want to be free. That's what's called liberation. That's what liberation is. I am free from myself. I am free from this garbage that is running my life. So if I go into a moment and the moment bothers me, it gives me an opportunity to let go of what I stored inside of me from the past. So first, you start working with yourself and saying, I don't want any more of this junk in here. So I'm going to go through the day and not put any more in. That's your starting place. If it's hot, I'm going to enjoy the hot. If it's cold, I'm going to enjoy the cold. If somebody doesn't say hello, I'm going to giggle. If the boss comes up and yells at me, I'm going to get impressed that I understand what he's saying. That's pretty far out if you actually understand the language he's speaking in. So you get to the point where you realize you're doing this. You're causing this trouble. Stop it. And the example I always use, the driver in front of you is driving 15 miles an hour below the speed limit. They'll turn off soon. Why would you bother yourself for five minutes because of the driver in front of you? You can't do anything about it anyways. And you're going to start to see how much you bother yourself. That's an essence of what I teach. Life is not bothering you. You are bothering yourself about life. And you decide to not do that. That's your life. You start spending every moment consciously saying, I'm not going to bother myself about reality. You start accepting it. Then what? You will get clean. You will find out that there's a part of your being that if you stop making a mess in there, it's actually very beautiful. You'll feel love all the time, all the time. You don't understand that. You want to feel love? Just wave your hand in front of your heart. Waves of ecstasy pour across your being. That's what it means to be an energetic being. You could have, I'm telling you, you get to the point where you could just lay down on the bed and pass out with how much love flows through you. You are a great being. The trouble is you're all blocked up. So you clean that out and you're going to start to feel this energy. Yogis call it Shakti, Chi, energy, call it whatever you want. Spirit will start to flow inside of you. And you'll start to get these tremendous rushes of well-being for absolutely no reason. You do it now if you see a beautiful sunset. Well, what if you see a leaf fall? What if you hear somebody talking? What if you see somebody? It doesn't matter. You'll just, it'll happen all the time. You become a being of light. You become a being of power. You become a being of greatness. Now what? Now the moment unfolds in front of you. You're not judging it. You're not hating it. You're not loving it. You're just being there with it, appreciating, respecting that the moment's there. And it brings love inside of you. Why? Because that's what's inside of you. <laughs> right now, it brings trouble and pain inside of you, doesn't it? Because that's what's inside of you. So once you create beauty inside, or once you remove the junk, then you feel love, you feel compassion, you feel well-being when you're in the presence of something. And guess what you do? You help. That's what you do. The moment's passing by. Is there anything I can do to help the person, to help the situation, whatever it is? You do the best you can at work. You do the best you can to raise it, to come up with good processes, to develop. You do the best you can to create beauty, perfection. Why? Because that's what's inside of you. You do the best you can for the same reason an artist goes out in the middle of the woods with an easel and spends the day painting something that no one will ever see. It's an opportunity to express yourself. That's what going to work is. That's what your marriage is. That's what having children is. That's what being a soccer mom and going to pick up the kids at soccer. Put your heart and soul into whatever you're doing because it's an opportunity to interact with 13.8 billion years of life that has given to you. You accept it. Then you see, what can I do to improve it? What can I do to bring love, to bring joy, to bring light, to bring perfection? And then you move on to the next moment and then the next moment. I end these talks by saying, because some of you are young, trying to set direction on your life. No matter what your parents say, don't worry about it. The highest life you can live is that every moment that passes in front of you is better off because it did. You can't live a higher life than that. There are moments passing before you. They are big. They have history. You can interact with them, but you are not going to change what is unfolding in front of you. As it unfolds, lift it. Be conscious. Be clear. Have your intention not to make it be the way you want. The intention is to see how it is and where is there room for me to raise it as it passes by. You'll get a beautiful life. So I'm going to end where I started. You have only really one basic choice in life. Do I want to go out there and fight with life because I'm not okay and I'm going to try and make it be a way that will make me feel better? Or do I want to get rid of this garbage that I've been storing inside of me so that I can honor and respect and appreciate life as it passes by and then participate in this beautiful sport 
of making perfection, of raising it. That's spirituality. Do you see it? And the beauty of it is you're empowered. It's all about you. It's not about anything else. It's about your ability to let go of your garbage and then express the beauty and light that's left. Jai Gurdiv.